1,184 bubbles or nuts, however you call them. Can you believe that? So hello, hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my very small place on the internet where I talk about my knitting life and my knitting adventures. My name is Isabel, I am in France and today it's going to be a regular episode, another one of these where I talk about my knit, what I'm wearing of course, what I have finished, I have two finished objects and what I am working on. I will add at the end of the video, because not everyone may be interested into that, a short segment about my life updates. And one of you has asked me to talk about the jewelry and the other accessories I was wearing. So I used to do that back in the day when I first started my channel to talk about all the jewelry and accessories and makeup and stuff, I stopped talking about it. I stopped referencing into the description box and no one ever talked about that. So I did not think it was of some interest to any of you, but you've asked, so I will. And if I have time, I may also talk about one segment that I miss talking about, I used to place this segment into my Woolly News series, but I have no time any longer to maintain and film videos about Woolly News. And in that series, I was used to be talking about who I am knitting with. And sometimes I miss talking about the music I'm listening to or the series I'm watching. So I may reintroduce that from time to time at the end also of my regular knitting adventures videos. So after this very long introduction, if that sounds good to you, please stay tuned. Okay, first, what am I wearing? You may, I, I will remove the scarf so that you, you may sew it better at a later point. I'm wearing my chunky fishbone sweater by Nerunga Ruke. I think I need that sometime in 2021, the second half of 2021. I just had a look before I started to record and this sweater is made with Donegal yarn. I know Donegal yarn from, comes from Ireland. I bought it in the Pyrenees, in that mill that is not working at the mill any longer. And the lady has a small yarn shop. It's not a shop, it's just a room where she sells yarn. And yarn from the previous mill, her father was using, was running the mill and she still has sometimes a few skeins that she pops up and she sells and other yarn that she gets from some kind of yarn supplier. In that very green, very green and heathered colorway, there are some kind of tweedy aspects to the yarn. I like it very much. It's very rustic, but it's extremely soft and warm. And this is what I'm needing right now. Today we have, this morning we have sun, we will have another big storm coming up this afternoon. We are on a Thursday. The video should be up by tomorrow. I had no time filming this week. I had a horrible weekend. So I hope everything is gonna be okay. And with the big storm coming up again, wind and, and, and rain and no sun, I was thinking I wanted to wear comforting knits. The second piece I am wearing is my Olympe scarf. I'm going to be talking about it just after that in my finished object because it's finished, it's blocked and it's very comfortable and cozy. And the one thing I would be also, I would like to be talking about, but I don't know if I will have time to say everything I, I want to say and edit for tomorrow. We'll see 
is that I specifically chose that sweater because I wanted to wear the scarf and I was trying to find a sweater or something that would go with the scarf. And I think it's one of my other goals in my Yarn No Buy Year to make it a bit funny. I'm not sure I'm going to spell it out and write it down. It's to try to wear and match. We have the matching knit along, but that's for something that you are going to be knitting for your current accessories or your current sweaters. Another piece that would match one of your existing finished object, but it's to match my knits together in my wardrobe and in my outfit. And one rule of thumb I have been told for many, 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 many years is three colors, no more than three colors on yourself. And if you look at some kind of videos where people talk about outfits, I don't, I don't have anyone to really recommend because I'm cherry picking and I'm not subscribed to any of them is to maybe use two colors in your outfit. So that makes it very complicated, more restrictive, very difficult, but it's kind of a challenge that can spice up your game with your needs. So for today, and I'm going to stand up on purpose in that kind of idea, I tried to remain with two colors. And you've already seen that pants, I was trying to wear it with the pink dusking and I did not like the way it looked. So you see two colors and I have brown boots. So two colors, the kind of brownish and it's a creamy brown. It's a warm brown of the scarf. The warm brown, beigey, rosy of the pants and the green of the sweater and the sweater also is kind of a warm, warm green, warm green. So we are in the warm, neutral or with a pop of green for the sweater realm and with everything that I chose today was around the Olymp scarf. So the Olymp scarf. Olymp is a pattern by Camille Delahaye. She is tricot pattern Camille about everywhere. I will link down below the details of the scarf. And I knit it with cashmere yarn that I bought at Atelier Pure Laine. It's 50% merino, 50% cashmere. When I was knitting at some point, I think I talked about it and it's a fingering or light fingering weight yarn and I chose to knit it double to kind of try to match the scarf gauge and with four millimeter needles. And at some point I was afraid it was going to be too stiff, not supple. I'm not trying to talk about drape but being supple enough so that you can do whatever you want to do with it and place it the way you liked. So that was one thing. And the other thing is I wanted to be able to place it once around my neck or fold it half and, and, and tuck it in. So I made it much bigger than what the original pattern called for. I have to say that after blocking, or I would just say washing, I let it soak, soak in cooler to the touch water with soap. And I let it soak for quite a while. I placed it in a towel to get as much as water as I could. And I let it down flat, no pinning, no nothing. So I'm not sure it qualifies to be blocking. I just watch it and it became very supple. I you, you may say drapey, but you see, it's flowing. It's, it's, it's a supple scarf and I was afraid it was going to be too stiff. And I think this yarn is extremely <laughs> magnificent just due to that quality. And one of the ways I like to wear my scarves 
is that way. It may be a bit bulky to wear it that way. So 1,184 bubbles, that's a lot. And <laughs> maybe it's an octopus scarf. Does it remind you of octopus arms and, and the kind of little structures they have just underneath? And yeah, it looks like octopus kind of, kind of picture or, or representation. I like it a lot. As I said, it's a, it's a warmer brown, a creamy brown, and I chose this sweater to pair it with and the pants to pair with the two of them in my new kind of idea of two colors. Two colors, it's going to be very difficult. Maybe three. Maybe three. Anyway, I really love it. I, it became very soft after washing or soaking into the water. Very soft. And I was kind of reassured about the way you, the yarn would behave because I was afraid it would be too stiff and I would not like the way I would, I would feel it to my, to my touch. All the little bubbles, I just love it. I love it. It's very big and if I would maybe just do something else, I may not knitting as long, but I was afraid it was going to be too stiff and I could not drape it around me the way I like if it was not uh, if it was not going to be supple enough. So I needed length, maybe, but this is, this one is going to be one of the central pieces in my wardrobe, even though I think cooler tones suit me better. I really love the color of this, of this scarf. Okay, so the Olam scarf was my first finished object. I have a second one and it's the sea breeze beanie or hat that I need for my son too because he asked for a beanie that would match the scarf I made for him a couple years ago for Christmas. Let me check the name of the designer. It's from the 52 Weeks of Accessories book by Lene Len Magazine and let me check the name of the designer. Okay, so Seabreeze is by Paulina Kunsola. I'm very sorry if I'm butchering your name. I will write it down below so that you can see the name and you, you, you can have all the details of the very, very interesting book on Ravelry. So what he liked about the Bini was the cables. I was quite surprised. I had just suggested this one to him, but I was really not sure he would pick it up. This is the one he chose because of the cables and because the scarf has some cables on them. I talked about it already in my previous video why he chose. So there are three big cables. There are three motifs. The same motif is repeated three times. The, the big cables have smaller cables on either side and some... <laughs> I never remember. Some seed stitch one by one. Uh, and you change every row, row in between. I always want to say moss stitch because there is a moss pattern in French and I'm mixing that all together. And the yarn is Fonti Polaire. Fonti Polaire is Merino and Alpaca. And this yarn is extremely soft. You have the decreases at the top, the crown. And I like very much the way the crown looks with these three big cables. It's a bit small to me, for me, because his head is smaller than mine. So I will, I, I, I showed him pictures I had it on, but I don't want to, to stretch it out too much. I sent him pictures, he said, okay, I love it. So I'm going to be sending it out to him. I wanted to show it, show it to you before I mail it to him. So next I'm gonna be talking about my work in progress. 
my first work in progress is a little bandana. I'm not even going to be referencing any pattern because I'm just sweeping it out on my own. The little bandana I am making with cashmere, the same cashmere as the Olamp scarf, held singles, sorry for the needle noises, held singles in just plain and simple stockinette so that I can gauge swatch for a future sweater. So these are US 3, I think it's US 3 and it's 3.25 millimeter needles. Yes, that's, and I think that's the one gauge I'm gonna be using knitting a sweater. I have looked around, there are several I have seen, two of them are in my queue and I have the patterns and I bought the patterns Two, two years ago when I was on my no buy pattern online digital pattern <laughs> frenzy. So I uh, there is the Kutarti by Sari Nordland and and the Corbis by Moonstruck Knit and she is Natasha Hornby. I had to look sorry. I think both sweater would work with that gauge and that yarn. The Corbis has kind of deep sleeves and I've been unraveling two of my sweaters to turn them as vests and I will be talking about that just after, after I finished here. So I'm unraveling already two sweaters because I did not wear them because the sleeves were too big and they were not fitting under my my coats or the, or, the, or the vests. Am I going to be choosing a sweater that has deeper sleeves and that kind of a shape? I don't know. Couture has been on my list for a very long time. I love, I love, I love this pattern. Do I want it in the cashmere? Maybe, I'm, I'm still not decided. You see, I'm still not decided, but I think I like this gauge. You know, it's not too open, but as, and it's already flowy, but as I have experienced with the alum scarf, the yarn bloomed a bit and relaxed a bit too. I will block this little scarf. I'm about halfway. I just need one evening on the, on the scarf. And after that, I moved to another work in progress, but I like this gauge. I think it's the right gauge. Maybe I could knit with smaller needles, but I think it's okay. I need to wash it, block it, and see how it behaves, and then choose a pattern. As we are moving to a warmer weather in France, at least, and maybe overall in the world, uh, globally, I mean, um, I think lighter sweaters are going to be in much use for me. So Couture, Couture for now is on the list. Poet 2. So these are the two ones I had been thinking about long ago before I started to swatch and I had decided I would make one of Sari's sweaters with the cashmere head single. So these were, were the two ones I had in mind. Maybe I have to look around some more to look in my own library and see if there is any other thing that catches my eye and attention and interest and I would meet with this beautiful, beautiful cashmere yarn. Okay, next, let's talk about my sweater transformations. The two ones, the two Lorenzon sweaters I talked about in a previous episode that I wasn't wearing and I decided I was going to be transforming into vests. Mainly remove the sleeve, unravel the sleeves, make a little border and that's it. So let's first talk about this one I unraveled in second and that hasn't been giving me much misery because I was expecting this one in to, to be more difficult as to unravel as it is fine, not, not lace, but finer, I would say finger, fingering, maybe between fingering and light sports 
more hair in yellow, this more hair I got into the Pyrenees. So you see I have unraveled the sleeves. Here is the sweater. I have unraveled both sleeves. I have this much of mohair I reclaimed. I'm going to be using that to, to knit a little border. I, I, I tried it on. I, I could be even wearing it that way. It just rolls under and it's fine. I think it would be a bit better tied it would tie up the whole garment better if I, if I make, as I had in mind, some kind of a border that would remind the neckline and the bottom. So these are twisted ribs. So I'm not sure if you say twisted ribs or half twisted ribs because just the knits are twisted and the pearls are pearled. But I will make a border and it's going to be done. And I was very careful unraveling that one because I was thinking mohair, it's difficult to unravel and everything and it's not going to work and I will have many difficulties. Not at all. Of course, I, ha I was careful as I was pulling on the yarn, but no major difficulties. The one in the cocon bleu yarn gave me lots and lots and lots of misery. So, the Cocon Bleu Lorenzon sweater, the first one I knit. And you're going to be seeing, it's it at the point where I wanted it to be. It's at the same point as the other sweater, the mohair one. And here are just the sleeve, the armholes, the sleeves opening. And I'm going to be doing the same, that is a little ribbed, um, twisted rib border for both of the sleeves. What happened is that you may see it if I take it close. I hope it's going to be blocking out. I've run it everything in the front from about here and in the, ba in the back, the back, I need everything in even higher about, about here. I had to unravel up to there because what did I do? I think I accumulated three main mistakes that led to a catastrophe. So let's, let's get it real and in proportion. It's not a world catastrophes, a catastrophe, but I was. So first thing, very dark yarn. It's dark blue, working at night, very dark yarn. Second thing, dim lights, because I was third thing watching a series that was grabbing my attention. And I was very confident this cocoon yarn would unravel very easily. Yes, it was. Thing is, when I, with my hands in, I really mean it. And I am used to spend some time to start to unravel and, and un undo what I have done at the bottom of the sleeves or anywhere else where, when I um, change or add a new yarn, a new ball or something like that. It's, it's usually very well woven in and very solid and it, I've never had a sweater unravel due to that, to a bad start or finish or changing yarn thing. So I started to unravel and it took me a long time to for the first sleeve and to start to unravel and when when I was going maybe maybe half hour to carefully untie everything and all the knots I have been doing and the anyway you know and I was unraveling and unraveling and unraveling and I hope I'm not giving up anything about the pattern. The shape of the sleeves are made with short rows. So I knew at some point I would be going back and forth unraveling. And those three things, dark yarn, dim light, interesting series I was following. I ran into a place where I think I had changed the ball because it was at the beginning and I was just finishing my previous ball and I did not want to uh, lose that little part and have it 
somewhere. So I had a point where I had to unravel a change of ball into the short rows. And this is where everything went bad because I started to unravel without noting it, noticing it. I started to unravel what ended up being the back about at this place. And it was very difficult and I was thinking, but why am I having so much trouble unraveling? It looks like I'm going backwards from the knitting. You know, when, when you unravel the way you've knit, it, it's easy, but if you unravel the other way around, it's not easy. So I was thinking, I'm unraveling from the wrong, from the wrong side, but as I was knitting short rows, I did not really, I was unraveling short rows. I did not really think about it. And I started to unravel and, and, and everything. And I was pulling on the yarn to see where the other end was and everything. When I did realize my mistake by holding the piece in front of me and I was thinking, oh boy, what did I do? And of course I had unraveled a whole big part of the back. I'm not sure, but it, it was not unraveling this way. I was just unraveling the stitches. And I was thinking it's impossible for me to repair that because there was a, maybe that much of <laughs> yarns and, and stitches that were and floating around <laughs> that were had been undone in, in the armhole increases to shape the armhole. I thought it's impossible for me to, to fix that. So I said, okay, let me unravel the whole thing. So I, I may have pictures. I think I have pictures. I, I, will, I will place pictures. So in the back, so this is, yes, this is the back. I unraveled up to that point. And in the front, I unraveled up to the point where maybe the last two rows for the armhole shaping, everything. And I was so mad at myself that the next day <clears throat> and up to last night, I did need the whole body again. I was very mad at myself and I was saying, okay, I need to do it again. I need to do it again. So you see, it's a bit, the, I haven't washed the yarn. I was so mad at myself. I did not wash the yarn. I did not want to wait. Okay, my balls are on the floor, so I hope my cats are not going to be playing with them. And I did not want to spend time washing and drying out the yarn. So I did knit back again, right from the unraveled ball. And you may have this saying if you, fall from a horse, you have to go back on the horse right, right after it, because of, if you don't, you may have other, <laughs> you may never want to be riding a horse again. This is what I did. So I unraveled and I cast it on my stitches and started to knit on the back on the same night. It was one o'clock in the morning. I was so mad at myself, so mad. And it was last weekend. Last weekend, we had a big storm. There is another one that is coming this afternoon. We had a big storm and I was in so much pain. I don't want, to, I know, I know it's, it's on me to decide to go back to see the surgeon and everything. It's just to give you context. I was in so much pain. I was so mad at myself about what I did that I did not want to wash the yarn, let it dry for it to relax and start knitting again. I hope it will block out. And if it doesn't, look from a distance. The yarn is very busy. You don't see it. From a distance, I've placed the sweater or the sweater body at some point, at some distance and maybe one meter, three feet from me. I don't see it. Maybe you're gonna tell me I don't have good eyes. Yes, I do. I don't have good eyes. But if I don't see it a meter or three feet from, from me when I'm wearing it, I'm not just, I'm not gonna bother about it. I will wash out 
wash it out, of course, so that maybe it's going to be evening out. It's super wash yarn, so I may throw it in the washing machine. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't like, I've never put any any knits in the washing machine, but I may be doing it with that one. I'll see. I don't have the, I think I still have a ball band, so I'll see what the recommendations are, and I look online for the cocoon blue iron weight washing recommendations. So I may do that to see if it evens out the stitches even more. And if it doesn't, well, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be just at the top of the front and of the back. I say it's a design element. So now that I have finished to knit the body again, it took me four evening, I, four evenings. I knit only with that on that project. I was so mad <laughs> at, at myself. I was thinking, I'm not filming before I have the sweater ready for the sleeves or at least the armhole opening to be fixed. So this is one of the explanations where I'm filming this just the day before I'm going to have to be posting it. And this is what I have left of the Cocon Bleu yarn. So I have way enough to, of course, to make the border on the sleeves. And I will have enough, maybe if I use that for the border or a little bit more, I will have enough to match a little accessory with the sweater for my matching it along. And I have to say that the matching it along, it was not in my thought process for the idea. But it was kind of underneath the idea what I have been talking about at the beginning of this video is how you match your knits all together or with the other pieces of your wardrobe. And if I want to stick to the two colors rule that are going to be quite difficult or maybe three colors rule, I will rule or guideline, I mean, the knitting police and the fashion police is not going to be coming after me and it's not going to be coming after you if you don't follow that two or three color rule. But using that for, I think I will make a little scarf or a little bandana. I will see how much I have and how long it's gonna be, uh, how, how big I can make an accessory. With a vest, am I going to be making a hat? I may have enough for a smaller hat for a cap type of hat. Am I going to be doing this? I do not know. I wear scarves much more than I do wear hats, or at least I wear hats during the winter time. And I wear scarves all year round. So maybe I will need some kind of a little scarf, my own little trendy little scarf or some other, some other type of little scarf. Maybe another bandana, but I will have already two bandana styles and bandana are more on the casual type of look. So a small scarf, my, my trendy little scarf is a trend, is a very a narrow scarf, a long narrow scarf with one by one ribs because I did not like the garter stitch on the Sophie scarf. I don't like garter much. So maybe one of these or some of the little scarves that are floating around all over the internet. Okay, so that's it for today for the knitting part. And if you're not interested into my life updates or other things that are not totally knitting related, you may just stop here. And I thank you a lot for being here with me and for doing all the YouTube goodness, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything. And I do hope I will see you next time. Okay, life updates. As I had said, very difficult weekend. I, I was in a lot of pain. It's better now. I've seen my physical therapist two days ago, and I'm seeing her again this afternoon. I'm on this 
process. I need to call. I need to make the call. I need to make the call. So I will. I will. The other thing I would like to be talking about, one of you has asked about the ring I was wearing when I was showing, I think, the dusking sweater, the pink ring. I have several of these rings. These rings I get in the Pyrenees, the same way or in the same village, I get all of my leather bracelets or armbands. I wear all of these bracelets every single day. I love them. I have other bracelets, much pricier. I prefer the leather contact. And if you are a vegan, I'm very, very sorry. I may be shocking you. But anyway, I wear these bracelets and I buy them in a little village where there is a lady who does that. And I've bought all my belts also in her shop. And there is a little shop. I've been going there for 30 years since I've been, since I found this village in the Pyrenees. I'm not buying a ring or earrings every year. I've been buying most years. So this one is a green stone. It's not, it's not an amethyst. That's, I think it's a kind of a quartz type colored stone. It, these are real, real stones, but not very pricey stones. And all of the rings I have, I bought maybe in the between 50 and 80 euros range. Never, never 100 euros. So this one is green. So it's not quartz. I need to find the name. Let me find the name because I have the name in my head, but it's in French. Okay, so it looks like it, the same name in English and it, in French. It's Avent. Inventorine. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I should have looked about how to pronounce it. I, I will write it down. Aventurine is some kind of a quartz that has colors. And one of them that I really love is the green color. So I don't have matching earrings. So this is why I'm just wearing these very simple hoops. And I buy all of my colored rings there. I will link down below what I can because I'm not sure they have an, on, they do not have an online shop. I'm not sure how, if they have an online presence at all. I know the lady from the belts and scarves uh, shop doesn't, but I will, it's in Saint Bertrand de Comanges. I will place the name of the village and its location so that you can have a look. If you ever go to the Pyrenees, you may go there. And it's a small village that is on the Compostela path that goes from Paris to Spain. That, that's it for you. To Spain, to the, to the Atlantic Ocean, the north of the Atlantic Ocean in Spain. So it's a very famous, very ancient, I love this village. I will try to place pictures because as I was very sick last week, I did not go outside at all. And it was raining cats and dogs and cows and horses and rhinoceroses and giraffes and elephants. It, it was, the weather was so bad with heavy winds. It was a very, very big storm. So I did not go out and I have no pictures. So I will place the pictures of the village at the beginning and at the end of the video so that you can, you can have a look. And this is where I get most of my jewels. The other ones I have, this is from a shop that I used to buy. So these were in the pricier range, maybe a hundred euros at the time. It was very pricey. It's, it's, silver. So this store is, hasn't been running for, went out, they retired maybe 20 years ago, something like that. And I would buy one ring or one pair of earrings or bracelet per year. And I would um, buy it for my birthday and Christmas that are a month apart. So this is how I was justifying buying these kind of rings. So this is not my wedding band. My wedding band is in gold and I'm not 
wearing gold any longer. So at some point I bought that ring and I have several others that I can, I can talk about whenever I, I film. If you're interested, please tell me down below. And these earrings I got, it's not an MLM, so I'm not going to be telling you what brand is it. It's not an MLM. And it was a friend who was selling these jewelry, very good quality earrings that are in silver, very good quality, nice, nice closure. The, I've had this one for over 15 years. And my friend was selling these jewelry. You know, she would have some kind of setup in her house and people would gather and have cake and coffee and buy her jewelry. The problem is with that kind of business is that she had to buy all the stock by herself and everything she was selling she had to bought herself first so she did that for a couple five six years when her kids were young and she could not she did not want to have a nine to five job because she wanted to be taking care of her kids and after her kids were grown ups she stopped and she went back to her regular type of job so I'm not going to tell which one it is because I do wear them. She was my friend and I was buying from her because I liked the style. And also the style has changed to something a bit louder with lots of things, flashing colors and stuff like that. It's not my style any longer. I do wear and I do love the pieces I got from her at the time. But not, and I'm, I stopped buying after, after she stopped. There were other people I would have been able to buy from in my area. I just did not. I, I was doing that because of her and she was my friend. She still is my friend. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. I'm not going to be talking about who I'm knitting with because it's very late. I have to work. I wor I'm working from home today. And students are on vacation, so I don't have any classes. This is why I'm filming today and I will be able to edit tonight and tomorrow morning if, if I haven't finished tonight. And, and the video is already long enough, I think. So I will be talking about who am I knitting with on a future video. And mostly about these, these series, I've been captivated and making mistakes when I was unraveling that Lorenzen sweater. If you are interested into my jewelry talk, my who am I knitting with? Mostly series or music. I do read. I'm not sure you'd be interested into what I'm reading. So. What I watch or what I listen to, I listen to music most of the day, all of the time, when I commute, when I work, of course, not when I'm teaching, but if I'm working and I can have either my headphones on or I'm alone and I have music on, I do. I do listen to a lot, a lot, a lot of music. So please tell me down below if you would be interested in by me talking about that at the end of the videos, not at the beginning, because not everyone would be interested into that. Please tell me so, because it does bring me a lot of joy and happiness when I listen to these tunes. I have to say, when I was for these three days in a lot of pain, I was not able to do much. So I had very loud music to be louder <laughs> than the pain. But anyway, it does on a regular basis, bring me much joy and happiness. And now I do hope this sweater is gonna be giving me more joy and happiness that it, has, that it has been giving me so far. And I thank you a lot for being here with me. You are in my thoughts and I'm sending you all my Merry Little Stitches and very good vibes. Thank you for being here with me and I will see you next time.